performance for Juice. Clint Dempsey has done it. He had some tough times early on in life and he's persevered and you know he's really come up in the ranks and you know become a global superstar. From the start he was free spirited. He brought this flair that we really haven't seen. He's pretty skillful, but I think one of his best qualities is just his determination. You know, he wants to be the best on the field every time. You know, it's not like he's the most athletic person in the world or anything like that, but he has this country strength. It's hard to describe. He's just a strong kid, and he kind of bulls his way through situations sometimes, and then he also has, you know, good skill and ability to be like that as well. It's three on two for Seattle. It's Clint Dempsey in the area. And it's Clint Dempsey getting his first goal of the season. We haven't produced a lot of American players uh, with as much flair, or at least the mindset to try as much as Clint Dempsey tries to do on a soccer field. And it's refreshing in a lot of ways uh, when you see somebody with that different mold. He wants a flip, that is, up towards Pepper again. Oh, he's lost it, and it's there by Dempsey. Extremely talented, hungry for goals, very intuitive, great instincts. He has the good quality that he makes everybody's game easy. The one thing that sets Clint apart from everybody else, uh, particularly the US, is that he gets in the box and scores goals. He takes over games and he's not afraid of the challenge, which is, uh, you know, you don't often find that with a guy that's skillful and that's a massive attribute. He has this sort of uh, imagination during the game, doing what sometimes we think is the unthinkable. We're always waiting for Clint Dempsey to do something special. That's what makes it so much fun to watch. I would call him an old-fashioned central midfielder who would do a job in the middle of the park uh, defensively, whether it was making challenges, winning the ball back, but really came alive when the ball was in and around uh, the penalty box and would get on the end of things purely by instinct, and that's why he scored so many goals. He was someone that could definitely look at another player in the eye and, and look at him and say, I'm going to be better than you today and he had that competitive edge and that drive that he wanted to be the best. Inside, there's a fire, you can see it in his eyes. He's got that look and he leads by example. I don't think he's, a, he's kind of the rah-rah guy. He was never a guy that was the guy in front of the group and trying to be a leader in that sense, but you knew what you were gonna get from him. He's got himself to the top because he leads himself more than anything else. He's the kind of guy you want to be in a ditch with, you know, and, and digging yourself out. He's, he's the guy, when you got a bunker down, he's the kind of guy you want. And I think that's why they made him the captain of the team. Jurgen Klinsmann is very aware of who people look up to, who his teammates look up to, who they respect. He's always had to scrap and fight and uh, prove himself. And I think he's getting to that point where, you know, all right, now you know, this guy takes over. He's a captain of our national team now. And, uh, you know, guys feel that. And they know where he's from. They know what he's, what he's done. And, um, you know, we all feed off of that. When you need a kick in the backside, you, you know, he'll do it. And when, when a guy needs, uh, you know, uh, someone to go and, and pat him on the back, you need that too. And I think that's why he's been chosen to be the captain because he, he brings all of those things. Dempsey, oh! It is a picture goal from the 
the skipper. It's the highest honor for a player to be a captain of uh, of any team that participates in the in the World Cup. I think to, to captain your country at, at any stage, at any time, at any game, never mind a World Cup, has to be the best feeling. You're leading a country out, basically. You know, you might have ten men behind you, but you've actually got a country behind you. Clint Dempsey's scoring streak carries on. If you look at him, he's scored a lot of goals, a lot of important goals, qualifiers, World Cups, and everything he's played in, he's been a big part of it. So, I mean, as far as legacy, he's got to be, he's up there with, with the best of them. I think Clint's mark is still not defined. Now he's come back to the U.S. after having a very successful European career. He came back here now to help the league grow. Have you made up your mind? I think that ultimately, as Major League Soccer grows and he continues to do well with the national team, will be a big part of his legacy. I think the mark he's leaving is for young kids to look up at Clint and think if, if Clint can go from a small town in Nagadocious, I think that tells everybody in the US they can achieve their goals as well if they dream long enough. I think he embodies, you know, American soccer or American culture all in, in, in one guy. You know, that grittiness comes from comes from the bottom and kind of wants to prove himself and, and um, you know, that, that American dream sort of thing. Clint, in one word, competitor. Desire. Exciting. Strong. Amazing. Daring. The best playing in MLS. A great football player. Place trade with 13 weeks 
every one of them got ten. Front my team, everyone gets sick. Call me after call me, everyone gets spent. Plus a gang, baby, real G, no jit. Pocket full of money, never touch no lip. I'm finna ride over, never saw they going me. I'll be the realest one, living what I know to be. Everything shirt time, don't show me. Everything gets shirt time, don't show me. Hey, I'll be good for the win. Never quit if I play ever play. Cause everybody gon' retire the train. Something they throw out the way, I go in automatic. Like I was a king. No stopping, no stopping. I feel a for pressure applied. Like they think I won't hit. Even though it was good, the game is switched up. Even though you got nothing, I proved it. Say, do this here for my fans. Hey, do this here for my friends. Hey, do this here cause I want to. Yeah, I do this here cause I can. Hey, do this here cause I can. I do this here cause I can. I do this here cause I want to. Yeah, I do this here cause I can. Hey, Yo, make some noise for Clint Dempsey up here, man. Come on, kick it. Can you kick the ball? Can you score a goal? Can you score a goal? You can score a goal? How you doing? Hey, Jackson. We look forward to you playing. <laughs> Come on, so we can talk for a couple minutes. Jackson. All right, cool. Thank you. You got him. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We're gonna kind of hang out by the Seahawk locker room. Yep. So no one, uh, no one bugs him before. Thirty seconds. Take one photo just of the jersey for our photo. Yeah, so we'll just walk out there in about five minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right, so they only gave me 30 seconds. So just play ball with me. I'm going to uh, welcome everybody to the field and point them to the video screen. There's a 45-second clip, which I guess is all I could find that was any good to do. So. All right. <laughs> At that point, take off your switcher. Okay. Right. You know, have the sounders thing. Yeah. Right. Is that right, or does, does does he speak before? Exactly what are we instructing him to do during the reveal? Exactly what's he doing? I, well, I just kind of want to walk through what you're going to so have him rehearse. Yeah, he's just gonna, Once he does that, what's he doing? Then he's just going to he's gonna grab the mic. No, and no, he's no, gonna Joe's going to hold the scarf first. He's, he's going to hold the scarf, scarf up. up. Okay, yeah. are we instructing him to ever turn around and kind of address the crowd like a gold scarf person would do? do turn around. Yeah. 360. Yeah, let's try to do that. We'll try to do that. We'll try to make that the end. I am trying to put together all the logistics. So, what time does he arrive? What entrance does he arrive? Is there security there? I yeah. think the fans will go crazy. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's been amazing with the, the Dempsey watch on Twitter last night. Okay. So was so unbelievable. Ziggy Schmidt joining us on the Zeke's Pizza Hotline. Coach, how are you, pal? I'm fine, Coffee. How are you doing? I'm good. I appreciate this. Uh, former professional player, uh, current Fox Soccer employee, uh, Keith Costigan, wrote on Twitter about, I think, an hour and a half ago that the Seattle Sounders are interested in bringing Clint Dempsey back to the MLS. Tell me about that. So at 1.53 Pacific time, there was this initial tweet. The Twittersphere, uh, however you call it, was, was nuts. We tried like crazy to, to keep the lid on it. You know, I mean, I, I, I know Clint. I've talked to him when he was here, when they played against Panama. Uh, you know, so, uh, uh, you know, I was like, there's nothing there, you know, uh, as, you know, that I can say right now. And then one of our players, Eddie Johnson, tweeted this for everybody to calm down. Uh, hey, listen, Siggy, I appreciate this. OK, take right. care. Siggy Schmidt, it, I'll say this. That was not a flat no. I, I, of course it was. That it's, was anything but a flat no. I mean, look, that was interesting. Kind of left the door open there. And then the big hullabaloo that kind of led to the craziness was this tweet meant the San Francisco airport. And from there, everything just kind of blew up via Twitter. There were great misdirects from fans. You know, he was on a flight to Seattle, then he went to another gate, and he was coming into a different airport. 
There were rumors of them going to Everton. Fans drove out to the SeaTac airport. But we were able to get them off sort of a side door and uh, got them out of the airport without anyone seeing him in Seattle. Adrian will give you a scarf. Do the four sides and we'll just uh, follow me off. Awesome. Right. Sounds good. Right. Right. Sounds good. <laughs> It's great to have you visiting us here. I understand you're in town to check out our team and some of the other teams. And a guy who's 30 years old, best American player we've ever produced. Have you made up your mind? Great, the reception. I've never felt so welcoming at home. Just seeing the fans and going up and shaking a few of the, the fans' hands, it was a dream come true. Because as a kid, you know, growing up in Nacogdoches, Texas, you know, the game that I loved wasn't always the most popular one. And to come in, in the stadium and have the whole stadium uh, being as excited as that for this team and for me it was a great moment. Well, it's a fine start by Seattle as we welcome to the Sounders' brand new signing, Clint Dempsey. Clint, it is terrific to have you here in the Pacific Northwest. The first question, why come back to MLS now and why Seattle? Well, the opportunity came up. Uh, you know, going into the season, I thought I was going to be a Tottenham. Uh, but you know, MLS and the Seattle Sounders, they moved mountains to get me here. What a moment before this game. The crowd were revved up. I think they knew what was coming. It was the sweetest of sweet moments. So what's up, man? Dude, I've been on lockdown. I couldn't say nothing. I was like, you know, coming in. The, it didn't get done until late last night, all the final paperwork. Oh, OK. I wasn't even thinking about it. I thought I was going to go into the season, and I was prepared. And, you know, I was like, you know, they said they would, you know, take good care of you, and they really want you to come back. And I was like, well, in that case, well, I'll listen to it. I heard there was, like, rumors going around that they were looking maybe to try something different. So I didn't know if there was any truth in that or not. I mean, they said that there wasn't, but you know how, you know, stuff goes. And then uh, the fact that they were listening to offers and saying that they would, you know, work and sell me, I thought, OK. I'll let you get on. Yeah. All right, cool, Good man. Nice to meet you, bro. I'll see you after the game. All right, bro. All right, bro. Congrats. Congrats. Thanks, man. Yeah, I think I was someone that needed to experience going overseas. Um, you know, I felt like I was able to get the things out of it that I wanted. And then now I'm looking forward to coming back to this league. They gave me my start. You know, trying to help, uh, you know, continue the growth of it. So, Clint, when you left the league in 2006, for all intents and purposes, you were a kid with something to prove. And now, seven years, you come back as a man, and some would say the man, and as a bona fide American superstar. How does that feel? I wouldn't I would say the man. <laughs> I would say it feels good to come back to the States. Uh, I'm excited about you know, coming home and uh, continuing the growth of the league. But I uh, wanted to try myself at the highest level and, and see where that would take me. Now, what was the tipping point, the moment where you thought that this was the right decision to come back for you and your family? I mean, was it something that Spurs did, you know, somebody they signed? Or was it simply watching your kids play in the backyard in London and thinking, you know what, it's time to go home? I think it was a little bit of everything. Every time I come back, it got more difficult to go back to preseason. You can see, like, my grandparents starting to get older. I just want to be around there for them, too, you know, because uh, life is short and you want to make the most of it. So like throughout my career, it's always been that balance of trying to accomplish your goals, but at the same time, not forgetting about family. You know, I still want to test myself and still want to do well when I come back. And it's important for me to come back when I'm in my prime and not when I'm past it, because coming back to, to be successful. But, you know, uh, being around family played a large uh, role in that. 
There's been a lot of discussion around the World Wide Web talking about your return to MLS and how it could diminish your skills for next summer's World Cup, which uh. is a complete joke and doesn't dignify a response. However, bringing the World Cup into the conversation, how much consideration do you give an event that happens every four years on, on a decision that you're making that's going to affect your everyday life? Yeah, another good question, man. You're on fire. Uh, what I would say is uh, <laughs> you want to do well in the World Cup. You only can play in a certain amount of World Cups. You're lucky if you can even play in one. But the most important thing is to be confident and to be, you know, feeling good about your play and, and, and the style that you're playing. Because I think you can play for a really, you know, top team. And if you're not playing consistently, well, then your confidence is not going to be there. Mm -hmm. In an ideal situation, you want to be playing on a top team and, and playing all the time. You also have to look at some of the MLS players that get called into the national team camp, they're able to compete with guys from Europe mm -hmm. for a spot in that starting 11 to, to play in these World Cup qualifying matches. So it shows you that it doesn't matter what league you're playing in, long as you're playing and you're playing good and consistently, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to help the team in Europe. You're going to be able to put yourself in a position to be in the starting 11 come the World Cup. Now, one of the ramifications of your decision to come back could be that you could face some obstacles that were similar to what David Beckham faced when he joined the Galaxy, which was kind of threw their salary, their leadership, their attention off balance, and kind of threw stuff out of whack, and it took them a few years to figure it out. Is that a concern for you? Or are you doing anything to ensure that that doesn't happen with Seattle? Well, all I can control is just going out, working hard every day in training, uh, doing the best that I can to try to help the team win games. Uh, be a good teammate, you know, if someone has questions, be able to be there for them, give them a little bit of what I've learned through my experience, maybe it can help them. I'm just going to be me and, you know, hopefully that works out. You know, I'm not going to try to, you know, to, to change. Now, many players, fans, coaches, and myself included, considered you the torchbearer of uh, Americans in Europe. And your stubborn persistence to be great was our collective stubborn persistence to be great. Did you ever feel that weight of responsibility and that maybe by leaving you're maybe letting us down? I didn't feel that responsibility. Uh, I mean, selfishly, I was just trying to do well for myself and my family. And it was difficult over there, uh, coming off the bench a little bit, but then ending the season well, getting the goal that kept the team up, and then going through all the different managers. I, had, I didn't have time to think about anything else than, okay, new manager's coming in. How am I going to make a difference? How am I going to get into this starting lineup. While I was over there, I was just trying to do me. You know, play the best soccer that I could play, enjoy it, take care of my family. And when I got called into the national team, try to do well when, when I was there. I think if you start thinking about too much outside of soccer, I think you can get, get off track and you can start to lose who you are mm -hmm. because you're trying to please other people. And if you try to please other people, then you're not always going to be happy. So as long as I can look myself in the mirror and be happy with, with the man that, that I've become and, and that my kids can look up to and my parents can look, look down at, then you know, I'm happy. I can't wait to see what your impact is for Major League Soccer and to see how you inspire the kids of this country. So welcome back, Mr. Clint Dempsey. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. it. Thank you.